Boom. <laughs> hey, Richard, how are you? Hey, Simon, I'm doing really well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, it's an early morning here in Sydney, but uh, I'm glad to be joining you online here for a quick uh, chat about a comparative agility uh, capability. We've got high performance teams, ones that I'm really, really excited about because it's a little awesome. bit different. Uh, it provides more of a practical approach to some of the concepts that we've been talking about uh, within comparative agility and, and, and other areas. So um, just how did we come to have this high performance team capability? Yeah, uh, so I'll just, I, I have some slides that we were talking about sharing. I'll just share my screen. We can yep. sort of talk over the slides as we go. Uh, you can see that? Yes. All right. Um, yeah, so this idea of high performance teams, um, core protocols for psychological safety and emotional intelligence. This is about behaviors that team, a team of people can engage in together that get them high performance, that get them safety, that get them emotional intelligence. Uh, we have diagnostics for these things on comparative agility. We have a diagnostic for psychological safety. We have a diagnostic for you know, team emotional intelligence. We call it the inspired teams diagnostic. Uh, these are about mindsets that are sort of outcomes of culture or behaviors that people engage in together on a team. Mm -hmm. And this high performance teams diagnostic is looking at specific behaviors that actually happen. So observable behaviors that it's not just measuring do you have it or not, it's, it's really um, guiding you on what you could be doing very concretely to move toward more psych safety, more group emotional intelligence, and moving toward higher performance. So that's what this one is all about. Yeah, it, it, what it reminds me of is that saying that, um, kind of, oh, I forget, I'm, I'm really butchering the term here, but happiness ensues, you, you, happiness ensues work, or you can't pursue happiness, it's an outcome. Oh, of things yeah. and i think that's something which resonates with me here is that someone could say okay we're going to go get psychological safety we're going to go get emotional intelligence say so, well actually this uh, these are things that come about when you do certain other things so yeah they, you got it you got it what yeah. do they call that there was a book about this i think called obliquity i uh, was like i have to read it then because <laughs> something straight on yeah it becomes really hard like you get anxious yep. about it you rest and, and you actually can't do it but when you kind of know what your north star is and you you go at it through some other path, it's, it's way easier. Mm. Um, and, and also I've, I've worked with a lot of companies and teams where, where they know about all this psychological safety and emotional intelligence stuff. And, and they're like, that's great. And, and we've measured it. Now we want to know what to do yeah. <laughs> to get that, right? Because the measurements don't really tell you what to do. Yeah, yeah. So I got into this, um, I've been writing code for a long, long time. Uh, I was good at it. And, and I, I rose as a leader and I started noticing that um, it, was, it was more about what we could get done together, how, how we felt doing it together, how much fun it was for us versus how good I was at it. Mm. So I got more interested in, in teams and teamwork and, and how do we build awesome tech products together? Yep. Uh, how do we get the stuff done that we want to get done together? Um, I, 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 I'm in a very similar situation. I've come from a delivery background, digital background, um, build, building things with teams for a long time. And then you start to get really curious about that. Wait a minute, the what we're building is really good, but just the how we build it is just as important to, and it actually, as we just talked about, when you do focus on how you build it, by inference, your what becomes so much better. So. Uh -huh. Exactly. And, um, you know, how we build it, the quality of the team. Some, some people say uh, the quality of the team is exactly reflected in the quality of the product, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the name of this principle escapes me right now. There's, there's this principle that the architecture that you see in the software directly represents the architecture, you know, the way that the organization of the code or the organization of the product modules is exactly the same as the organization of the people. Mm, it's also like the quality of the product is exactly yeah. the same as the quality of the relationships between the people. How, how integrated are the different software modules, product modules, exactly yeah. shows you how integrated are the people who built those modules. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and, and, I, and I like to ask people uh, this, this kind of question, what's the best team you were ever on in your entire life? So this could be a work team. Uh, and, and I define team here as any group of two or more people aligned with a common goal. Yep. Right, so this, this could be a work team, this could be a school project team, could be a current work team, a past work team, a non-work team, 
Uh, yeah, like, we have teams uh, all around us because we're all in different contexts and different exactly. areas of our lives. So, yeah. like my, my wife Molly and me, we're a team. We're we're a group of two or more yep. people share goals. Somebody once told me that their best team ever is their Saturday morning fishing group. They're just totally aligned on the goal for the day and, just and fishing, getting like. getting it accomplished. <laughs> Another, I, I watched yep. my wife Molly knitting. Yeah, and she does it with other knitters. They share ideas and information and knowledge and skills with each other. They're yep. they're all better knitters together than any one of them could possibly be individually. They're they're an awesome mm -hmm. team when they're doing that. And and so you know, I, I actually invite you, Simon, to think about what's the best team you were ever on in your life, uh, and anybody cool. listening or, or, or watching, and. Um, you know, first identify that best team of your life and then like take yourself back to it or if, you know if it's current team that might be easy if it's a past team sometimes yeah. people close their eyes and do it almost as a meditation take yourself yep. to that best team of your life mm -hmm. and and re-experience the activity you were doing with that group of people re-experience the people in the group and re-experience the sensation of doing that activity with those mm -hmm. people I like really re-experience it. I, I, it always feels good in my, in my belly as I think yeah. about this. Uh, and if you could summarize, if you could capture that experience and, and capture it in one word, summarize it all in one word, what would your one word be? Mm -hmm. what, what's your one word, Simon? To me, it's trust and just being belonging. I mean, when, right. so when one trust. feels that trust and belonging, they... They, it's kind of like that hierarchy of needs from Maslow, like everything else falls away. My, and I can just focus on the, being the best version of yeah. my contribution to that team. Yeah, that's beautiful. And, and this is borne out by, this is like an informal survey from doing mm -hmm. this with a group of people at a conference. And trust, just like you said, that was the biggest thing. That was the, mm -hmm. the one word that, that stood out more for, for more people than any other word. Mm -hmm. representing uh, consolidating all, all the feelings of that best team of their life also fun uh collaboration joy together safety satisfaction or they feel like an orchestra they're harmonious this is what it feels like to be on the best team of your life and this is all of course a subjective qualitative kind of thing and of course there are objective ways to measure this okay this is what i actually mean by a high performance team it's mm -hmm. objective so a team, any group of two or more people with a common goal, a high performance team is one of those, a team that is objectively better than other teams that do similar work. Yes. Right. So they, they have to be doing similar work. You couldn't yep. compare a football team with a technology development team. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. You could compare two football teams. Yeah. And, and, we, and we do this like every Saturday, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you could compare two technology teams. But you also couldn't compare someone in the... Uh, the kids league versus the nfl exactly. right so they're different there yeah. Are, yeah yeah and and for 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 sports there's like you know the metrics are easy it's just you look at the score at the end of the game yes and you know which yeah. team was better you look at the, the 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 standings table and you see which team has more wins than than, than the rest but in, in, uh, in other contexts for, for most contexts are that simple so yeah yeah it's it's harder for tech teams we don't we don't have a big scoreboard and a stadium yep. and people watching and but but it turns out these are things that you can measure and there are, there are measurements of these yes. things and there are behaviors that lead to getting higher measurements in these teams getting getting better results than other teams doing similar work mm -hmm. um so I, I ask people, do you want more of that? Obviously the answer is yes. And I, I take them on a little trip through the science and research. This is all like the background on teams. And, and we're gonna see a lot of reoccurring themes that we see in other capabilities here because they are all tied together, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for example, the Inspire Teams, uh, Steve Wolf, the author of that, he and I collaborate on, on, yeah. on some of the work together. Mm -hmm. um, so the, these behaviors, uh, we call them, protocols this is like um, be before we had computers and computer protocols uh, the definition of protocol was something like this um, a behavior that two or more people would engage in together sort of like a scripted behavior to make sure that they accomplished their desired goal together with minimum misunderstanding with mm -hmm. maximum understanding yep. um, and, and and so I usually tell the story starting with uh, starting with Google this makes it easy to tell the story in, in the context of yeah. uh, product development teams tech development teams 
Uh, so Google did a bunch of work to reproduce the research that had been going on in teams and team performance over the last five decades. Mm -hmm. um, during that five decades, there's like 250 different one thing that you need to have a high performing team, mm -hmm. depending on the researcher and the data and the teams that they're looking at. Yep. And Google, you know, like, you know, we're, we're a pretty high performing company. We've got a lot of high performing teams. What is it about the high performing teams that makes them the best? And, and could we teach that to the other teams? Yep. So they reproduced a bunch of this research. And what they found was psychological safety was the one most important thing yep. for team at Google. And this is like, this is the work of Amy Edmondson from back in the 1990s. And yep. we have what, the diagnostic for this that, that she's the author of on comparative yep. agility. Uh, so this is something that you actually can measure and uh, you, you can know the answer to. Mm -hmm. um, the thing about this psych safety research is it doesn't tell you exactly what to do. Like what are the habits you could build to, yep. to get the, to, actually, to actually build the psych safety and get the, get the high performance. Oh, and by the way, this, this cuts across all industries. Like, like Amy Edmondson's original work was in healthcare teams. It yep. turns out Google reproduced it for, for their tech teams and sales teams. Mm -hmm. um, my, my dentist, uh, you know, I was telling her the story of this. She, she ran back to her office, pulled out a dentist's magazine, and this article was all about psych safety in dentist's offices. Dentist's offices. So th this, was, this is like a, a thing that it's, it's, it's basically a fact. This is, this yeah. is the truth all over the world in, in every different industry. Um, turns out Steve Wolf, uh, he's the co-author of this, this article that was in Harvard Business Review along with Vanessa Druskett. They happen to live near me here in Boston. You know, mm -hmm. We happen to have a lot of universities. Amy Evanson did her research here. Steve and Vanessa did their research here. Uh, I was telling this story about Google to Steve. He hadn't heard that version of it, but he knew all about psych safety uh, because it's one of the components of team emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, which in comparative agility, the, the diagnostic for this is inspired teams. Yeah. So it turns out that teams that have measurably high emotional intelligence. This correlates to measurably high performance in mm -hmm. those teams. It's, it's objective. It's something you can measure. Uh, but sort of the same thing. It's, it's also, um, it, it, it's more of an outcome than a set of habits or behaviors you could engage in together. Yes. Um, and, and so this is, this is all interesting to me. And, and the science is really solid. And, and it helps me explain this to people about why they might want this for their teams. Uh, even logic-minded people, it's like if you want high performance, you know, you probably want emotional intelligence and psych safety. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you don't yeah. want high performance, I mean, now that now that you know the story, if you don't want high performance, then you could choose not to have high EI and not to have high safety in your teams. That's up to you. Yeah. Uh, now it's funny that I think a lot of people feel like if you did say that to them, you need team emotional intelligence, psych safety bag. Well, isn't that common sense? Um, but at the same time, it's not almost. Yeah, and it depends on who you ask. For some people, it's yes. like, well, that's common sense, and, and I already know how to do this. This is just sort of like how well, then why aren't we doing it? Like for others, it's like, um, no, uh, you know, I'm 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 a cold-hearted scientist. They don't say it like this, but it's like I'm a scientist. I I write code, or I'm a mathematician. Yes. I solve yeah. problems. I'm a physicist. Uh, Yep. There's, there's no room for emotions in my work. There, mm -hmm. that, that would be a waste of time. Let's just mm -hmm. solve the problems and write the code. Not worry about this emotion stuff, right? So, but while you can reach your goal, you're not the optimal version of your team. Exactly. It might take longer. It might be lower quality. You mm -hmm. Actually, you might fail. And, yep. and this is borne out by all the research, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, and then what if you actually want to be able to do this? Uh, so there's, there's some related research. Uh, it's not academic research. This is the, the work of Jim McCarthy and Michelle McCarthy. They, they spent a lot of time watching teams at work. Yep. And they noticed that successful teams share common behaviors. Mm-hmm. Right. So they were looking at behaviors, not feelings of safety or mm -hmm. ability to share emotions, these, this emotional intelligence kind of stuff. They were just looking at behaviors mm -hmm. that corresponded to success in teams. Yep. Um, they, they kind of factored out these behaviors. They, they, they figured out how to write them down in a way that they're almost like scripts that you mm -hmm. can use, that you can practice with your team. 
Um, that they're kind of like, um, well, they call them protocols because they're just scripts that you can follow with other people to make sure you're accomplishing your goals and yep. that there's hardly any misunderstanding. Turns out that when you, if you have a team and you practice these scripts, these behaviors, these protocols, you end up building higher emotional intelligence, you end up building higher psychological safety, you end up getting measurably higher performance. Mm -hmm. so, so that's the story. Um, here's a different way to look at it. If you want a high performance team, and you probably do, mm -hmm. uh, then you definitely want psychological safety. The science is really solid. And yep. psych safety is a subset of this bigger thing, team emotional intelligence. If you want to know how to do it, then core protocols is one way to do it, one set mm -hmm. of behaviors. There, there are others, but this is one concise, easy to learn and follow, easy, easy habits to build set yep. of behaviors for team EI and psych safety, which end up yielding higher performance. Got it. And so this is some more stuff we could look at. I think I really want to get into the, into the, the meat of it. So let's, <laughs> you've cool. our appetite, let's get into it. All right, so some practical skills. Um, I, I like to build this up as a, a series of building blocks. So I've got six building blocks. Uh, I've kind of taken McCarthy's work and, and reorganized it as, as building blocks for teams. Yep. Uh, the first building block is positive bias. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, there, there's no particular activity here. There, there is an activity I use to, to sort of show people what positive bias means. Uh, but, but what we're talking about here with positive bias is, is really just when you get together as a group of people, you, you probably have some goal or outcome in mind. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're oriented toward that goal and that outcome. That means uh, don't, don't be negative, don't negate, don't, don't, don't automatically say no when somebody offers an idea. Mm. And, and when somebody does offer an idea, like make believe that it might be a good idea just long enough mm -hmm. to try it out, maybe do a mental experiment on it. And, and then, offer something else, maybe offer a response to it. This is a little bit of the idea of voice in teams. Mm -hmm. And this is another part of the research. It turns out that in teams that have more voice, that, that more, more, more equality of voice, uh, everybody's, everybody on the team, their ideas are being heard. Yep. Those teams that perform other teams. And, and this, is, this is sort of an orientation toward that. That's what, that's what I mean by positive bias here. Just by the words positive and voice, I'm still already starting to get <laughs> formations of a situation in, in a, a real meeting room where someone says, hey, I've got this idea. And says, no, we don't have the time for that right now. Even if they respect that person and if they you know, include them, just by that negative shut. And actually, I think I've experienced that at work very recently that that shutting down of the person actually almost has yeah. them believe, wait a minute, this isn't a welcome environment. I can't bring my ideas here. I'm not, and this is the word I feel, heard. So yeah. if, if people don't feel heard, even if it's a good idea or a bad idea, we have time for it, we don't have time for it. If you don't give them the time to be heard, they will just stop bringing ideas to you and, and bringing yeah. information to you. Exactly. Um, this is about, you know, some people think of it as uh, yes and versus yeah. No, or yes, but right. Mm -hmm. Yes, but is a different way of saying no. Um, <laughs> it is, I, I, I hear from some people that they're working somewhere, they share an idea, and the response is, "We tried that idea five years ago. It didn't work out. Mm. We're not going to try it again. That's the bad idea, right? Mm. If, if you do that to somebody like three times, mm -hmm. and you teach them, don't share ideas. Exactly. Yeah. And if you teach people don't share ideas, then you're going to get outperformed by teams where people do share ideas and, and mm -hmm. hear each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so this is where we start. And then we add on to that, this idea of freedom or autonomy. And, and, and what we mean by this is if you, if you look at high performing teams, they're groups of people who get together voluntarily. The, the best teams mm -hmm. get together voluntarily. They're the people who want to work together. Uh, they choose the work they want to do and they get to decide for themselves how to get the work done. Um, other teams don't, that don't have all those characteristics, they tend not to perform as well as the teams where people are there because they really want to be there. I want to be here. Yeah, exactly. With those people doing that thing that way, right? This is like, this would be like the fishing team. Of course, I don't know. Okay, maybe there are fishing teams and you could objectively gauge the performance, maybe number of yeah. fish, size of fish, this kind of thing. Uh, or how much fun it was 
compared to other fishing teams, you know, and anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and of course, for work teams as well, this is something you could measure the performance of the work team. So a couple of the actual behaviors, one is called pass, another is called check out. Yep. Uh, th these are kind of like explicit scripts that you can practice with your team to teach you how to exercise your freedom and to be able to exercise freedom and autonomy with each other. Mm -hmm. I find this really one really interesting because this is where kind of we come to that point of let's assume like we have that hypothetical situation where we're, we're putting a, a, an idea forward. People need to say, I'm in, you know, to say, yeah, I want to be a part of this. Yeah. Um, but the, then you have some people on the team who go, look, I don't have time for this woo woo stuff. I'm out. I'm going to yeah. move on. So what happens at that point? Do we just say, look, you're free to do that as a part of your freedom. Um, we hope you'll come join us later. Is that? Yeah, absolutely. Like the invitation is there. Yep. Uh, if you have somebody on the team who doesn't really want to be there, they're probably, you know, they're, they're, they're adding friction to the team. They're, they're mm. holding the team back in some way. They might be sucking energy out of the other people on the team that you might have like six people on the team and one of them doesn't really want to be there. And, and you're getting like maybe three mm. people's worth of productivity out of that team of six because of the, the friction. Yep. Right. So let that person go somewhere else and, and maybe you'll get five persons worth of productivity out of those five people, maybe yeah. even more than five persons worth of productivity out of those five people. That would be a, a high, a really high performing team. But, right? but let's say we put an idea forward and we just say, great, we're going to perceive this idea for these. Let's say you had five people in the meeting, like you're talking about yep. three people are there. Two people go, sorry, I'm out. I don't want to be involved in this. We go, okay, great. You go on your way. We just proceed with our idea with those three people. Is that, yeah. yeah. People who yeah. want to be there, who want to contribute, who want to use their energy to the fullest. Exactly. And, and that energy might attract other people to the team who want to be Excellent. there. Excellent. Yeah. Right. This is something that, that they talk about. You know, I've, I've read this about Google, right? Yeah. Uh, one of the ways new product ideas happen at Google is some engineer just has an idea. Yep. And they share it with another, you know, somebody else who's interested in the idea and they get together and they start doing it together. And maybe some product manager notices and, and yep. they decide to join that team. Now it's the team of three. And the product manager mm -hmm. starts looking for more people who might be interested. And the team grows and it's full of people who want to be there doing mm -hmm. that thing together with those other people. Those are yeah, really I know awesome. that's a very unique thing about Google. Like you can move wherever you want, basically. Like and I never really understood until you said that it's about maybe about clustering energy. Uh, mm -hmm critical kind of guises of energy where it's like people who want to be there and people who are competent will produce their best product. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, of course you have to have competence, right? Well, they hire uh, for competence they don't, <laughs> and then they let you move where you go. You don't, you yeah. don't, you don't interview for a job. You interview yeah. for you, for you. So yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not saying that all you need is safety <laughs> and emotional intelligence. <laughs> You need competence. You need skilled people and yeah. this environment of safety and emotional But just having competence and skilled people won't get you an outcome on its own. That's what we're saying as well, right? There's, exactly. Exactly. There's, there's a focus and energy that needs to happen to produce an outcome. You got it. And th these behaviors of pass and check out. Pass is just if something's not going well, you can, if something's not right for you, you can pass on the activity at the moment, but stay yep. checked in with the team. Check out is kind of like really opting out of the space temporarily or, or for a long time. And, and, and actually making sure it's, it's like it's your responsibility to make sure the team is at their best. And, and sometimes the team is at their best if, if I'm absent, right? If I have an important phone call to make or yep. some email to do, uh, it, it's probably better for me to do that email outside of the team space than to do it in the middle of a meeting, distracting yep. everybody, dragging the team down. One, one point I liked when I was reading the book, which I'm not sure, maybe I'm jumping ahead, is that if you do pass, you, they ask the question, well, what would get you in? Um, oh, so this is, uh, this is one of the other behaviors. Yeah, uh, we'll get to that in a resolution. We'll, we'll talk about that soon. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, and, and really what this is about, just this freedom stuff, is, is it, it's, it means that when you're with your team, because, you, we, because we have these tools to pass and check out, when we're with our team, we are explicitly opted in. We have explicitly mm -hmm. decided to be there together doing that work the way the, way the team is doing the work. Uh, it's, it's, we have the freedom to do this. And, and this freedom is one of the things that leads to really awesome teams. Mm -hmm. And then self-awareness uh, turns out that if you look at really awesome teams, the people on the team, the individuals, 
know who they are. They know how they're feeling. They know what's important to them as individuals. And some behaviors that can help with this, some scripts that you could use. Uh, Check-in is about sharing your emotional state. It's not the only way to share emotional state, but if you don't have a way to do it on your team, this is an easy script to follow. Yeah. Ask for help. Turns out that on high-performing teams, people ask each other for help, right? <laughs> Nobody gets stuck. In, my, in my, some of my past teams, my, my not the best teams that I've ever worked on, I, I would get stuck, right? I wouldn't know how to do something. Yep. And I would just sit there trying to figure it out for Biting your head hours, against the wall. For half a day, for a day, for two <laughs> days. Instead of just asking somebody for help and getting it done fast, right? So I, it's an example of the team is worse off because we're not, we don't feel safe enough to ask for help or we're embarrassed about it or whatever the reason is. People ask each other for help and they typically, you know, they, they often give each other the help on, on higher performing teams. This is why one of the reasons they perform better. They get mm-hmm. the help they need when they need it. Yep. And the personal yep. alignment is this idea of knowing sort of what, what your North Star is in, in life. What's the most important thing for you? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, and, and these are like, these are, these are scripts that you can follow protocols. Uh, they're, they're ways to do it. So here's the emotion check-in kind of script. It's, it's really just fill in the blank on this sentence. I feel blank. Mm-hmm. And you can fill it in with any word or words you want. And then we take it from that and we sort of distill it down to this multiple choice. Glad, sad, mad, or afraid. I feel blank. The choices are glad, sad, mad, or afraid. Which one of those or more than one of those close, most closely matches how you feel right now. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you could maybe add on some more information, describe to yourself why you feel that way. What, What else is going into that emotion? Right. So it could be like, I feel glad. I, I met my son this morning. We had a coffee. Uh, adult son he's 25 we had a coffee we talked about my work his work our work together we're actually a team we work together on a lot of different things um you know i'm sad about various things uh challenges happening in in his other career not not the work that we do together Mm -hmm. i'm I'm mad about some of the people that he he has to interact with in that industry Mm -hmm. oh and i'm afraid because you know he's pursuing this this industry that's that's uh, that's sort of like, sort of like he's an artist and mm-hmm. turns out there's not much money being an artist, right? So mm-hmm. I'm afraid that, that he you know, doesn't have the, the, the funds to meet all of his needs. Mm-hmm. And, and this is an example of, of like sharing how you feel with each yep. other. Um, I, I, I ask people this in groups, you know, you can see, I don't know, maybe something about the groups I'm with, they're kind of biased toward glad, but all of the emotions are there, glad, sad, mad, and afraid. And in fact, I wouldn't believe it if I was with a group and there wasn't at least one person glad, at least one person sad, at least one person mad, at least one person afraid, right? Yeah. In, in every group I'm with, all of the emotions are there. Mm-hmm. It, it's just always, it's always the case. In every group any of us are with, all of the emotions are there. Okay. And, uh, and here's the script, right? The script is, this is how to share. This is, this is a way, right? It's a script. It, it, mm-hmm. This is easy for people. Even if you don't know how to do this, if, if you don't have the practice or habit of doing this, uh, here's an easy way to share emotions with people. Just, I feel glad, sad, mad, or afraid. You could add more information. Oh, you don't have to do it. You know, if we're sort of doing this as a group, you could, if it's your turn, you could just pass. You yep. freedom. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you, tell your, you tell your teammates you're done by saying, I'm in. And mm-hmm. they just say, welcome. There's, there's nothing else. They just say, welcome. They acknowledge you. Uh, they, don't, they don't ask you for more information. They don't try to fix you if you were sad or mad or afraid because there's actually nothing to fix. Uh, if they asked you for more information, you might not feel so safe sharing your emotions next time. Uh, they don't talk about you or your emotion check-in because then it wouldn't be so safe to do it next time. Mm-hmm. Right. So this kind of thing, this, this, and these agreements that go with it, they, they help build up trust. Obviously, this is a practice that yields higher emotional intelligence individually and together because you're doing it with other people. And, uh, and, it, and, and it builds safety because you, you know that nobody's going to talk about how you're feeling. You end up trusting each other and feeling safe together. Mm-hmm. And so here's, here's one of those easy scripts that you can follow as a team to build up these skills of emotional intelligence and safety. Yep. So uh, another one is this uh, this 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 idea of 
figuring out for yourself what your what your guiding light is what's your what's your north star what's the most important thing in your life mm -hmm. uh, the script for it this is sort of like a, a do-it-yourself script it goes like this i want blank fill in the blank with the single most important thing period <laughs> the single most important thing in your life the single most important thing in the world to you i want blank what is that one most important thing mm, but this requires real introspection and thinking beforehand right because i think a lot of people would have mm. to sort of struggle with that saying i want oh uh, there's 10 things yeah. that i want but what's the one thing that i really really want yeah and either be some some thought beforehand or or we we spend that little bit of time right now investigating yeah yeah so so what is what is that most important thing and then, uh, why don't you have it? It's a want, not a have. Why mm -hmm. don't you have it? Why, why don't you have all of it? What's blocking you? Mm -hmm. you know, this, this is almost like uh, this is almost like theory of constraints. What's the most important goal, and what's blocking us? Yep. And you know, I want blank again. Here's how the script goes. Now pick one of these superpowers. The superpowers here are self-awareness, integrity, courage, passion, peace, presence, self-care, fun, wisdom, and health. If you had one of these, if, if one of these was your superpower and you get to decide which one it is, which one of these superpowers, if you had it, would eliminate everything that's blocking you and get you that one or five or 10 most important things in the world to you, right? Which one mm -hmm. of these, if you practiced it intentionally, if you got really, really good at it, if it actually became a skill that you had and, and a tool that you could wield, if it really was a superpower, yep. Which one would get you everything else that you want in life? And, and there's a, uh, people who can see the screen, there's a, an asterisk next to self-awareness. Yep. If you're not sure what you want, then you probably want self-awareness. Okay. Uh, people, people laugh here. Uh, it's sort of a joke and, and actually not a joke at all. If you're not sure what you want, self-awareness. No, it makes sense. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> But and it doesn't stop have, there. Once you have self awareness, you still got to go into the other ones. So it's mm -hmm. the, yeah. You got it. You got it. Um, and, and then it's kind of like um, give yourself a way to practice it. Right? Mm -hmm. So don't, don't just declare, I want self awareness or I want self care or whatever it is. Now find a way to practice it. Actually build this into your superpower. Yep. And, and, it, and it's interesting. It turns out that when people do this, when they have this awareness of what they need to do for themselves to be their best selves, Yep. It's almost like the universe aligns around them. Yep. And they start to notice people who are offering more wisdom or more health or whatever it is that they, they said is their personal alignment. Well, I think there are, there is some science that connects to this as well. Like it's that whole cognitive bias of when I, when I, when I'm looking for a red car, when I'm looking to buy a red car, I see red cars all around me. That kind yeah. of thing. So when you do name that, what I want, you will start to see opportunities for that around you that yeah. may or have already been there or maybe not, but you'll start to notice them. When I, when I say my personal element is health, I start to notice, oh, there's a yoga school. Oh, yes. there's, a, oh, there's a gym. Oh, there's a friend who likes to walk at lunchtime for her break. You know, there's, yeah, yeah. there's all these things that you hadn't noticed before, but now you do. Yeah, it is mm. this, this cognitive bias takes place. So mm. that thing that you want, we call it your personal alignment, that future superpower. And I ask people, you know, which one of those is the one for you? Uh, in, 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 in one group, it turned out most of the people wanted health or mm -hmm. wisdom or courage. And of course, a bunch of people wanted self-awareness. And, and actually, there was, there was at least one person who wanted any one of those things that was on that list. Yeah. So it's interesting just to know this for yourself and then start to share it with the other people on your team. Mm -hmm. And by sharing it with the other people on your, on your team, it turns out that we end up like interconnecting together and supporting each other and actually acting like we're a team like we're people who care about each other and our outcome together and, and that, i guess this also acts as a, an invitation between team members to say for example oh man i want car i want courage um mm -hmm. other team members go, oh wait 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 why don't you feel courage like you're awesome you, know, you do you do a great job every day and that's an yeah. invitation for that flow of energy between team members to help them balance each other out and to give what they to give what yeah. I can give you to help give you get you what you need so you got it. and it's like I when I notice you might notice things that you're doing that look courageous it's like yeah you know it, it, it's so awesome I, I want to I want to stand up out, out of my chair and applaud you know yeah. like like cheer, cheer you on it's so awesome when I see it this is 
this is like, you know, we see this in sports teams on TV or in the stadium, mm -hmm. the, the teammates are applauding each other, right? They get up, you know, American sports, baseball, somebody hits a home run and everybody gets off out of their seats on the team. Yeah. yeah and they're cheering, yeah. right? Standing ovation from your teammates to you. Yeah. This is what, this is what great teams do. Mm -hmm. they, they cheer for each other. They, they support each other. They, 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 they cheer each other on. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, oh, and and this is like and, and they connect together. So the, the fourth building block here is these behaviors that help us connect together more, more cohesively. Uh, mm -hmm. Those those three about self-awareness, it turns out that they're also for connection check when you do the emotion check and you do it with other people. So you're connecting. When you ask for help, you're asking somebody else for help. So you're connecting with each other. Yeah, uh, this personal alignment stuff. What's the most important thing in your life? Well, we ask about it. And the, the behavior for that is called investigate. It's, it's really just about opening, asking open questions, being inquisitive, trying to learn more. Yep. Intention yep. check is another one of these connection behaviors. It's sort of a script or some guidelines for almost back, going back to positive bias. It's like when something happens on the team, when, when a teammate does something that you don't understand, instead of accuse and blame, yep. which is what a lot of teams do, we, we ask more about it. We're like, Hey, what was your intention when you said blah, 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 blah? Or what were you hoping the outcome would be when you did blah, 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 blah? So now there's room for dialogue. There's room for understanding yep. each other versus blocking each other out. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And in fact, you know, one of my best team in my life, my, my wife and me, we, we just did this before I, before I came down here to, to join you on video, Sam. <laughs> Uh, we, we did some of this, you know, what was yeah. your intention? What were you thinking? We didn't do it exactly by this script, but, but we have ways to do it. And actually, that's what's important. You don't have to follow these scripts exactly. Yeah, yeah. If you, if, if you don't have a way to do this already, then you might just follow these scripts exactly. But if you, if you have another way to do it, it yeah. doesn't matter that you like check in following that script exactly. What matters is that you have a way to know Change. what your emotional yeah. state is yeah. and share it with others. It doesn't matter that uh, that you pick one of those things and call it your personal alignment. What does matter is that you have a way to recognize within yourself what's most important and, yep. and what can get you to be your best self and to share it in some way with the other people on your team. Mm. Mm. These are things that make uh, some, some stuff you said there was really, really important around accusation and blame because those things can go down a very, uh, a, a very hard path very quickly. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then that's why having tools like this actually allow you to, it's almost navigating a pitfall, pit hole, right? If you're yeah. driving along at a hundred kilometers an hour, a pit hole, pit, a pit hole, sorry, you know, a hole in the ground can actually have a very negative effect upon your speed, but if you can quickly right. navigate around these things with just these kinds of yeah. auto corrections. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, you got it. You got it. And this is a way, um, all right. There, I think, I think you, you have a background in software development as well. Yep. Uh, sometimes I, I talk about this as like continuous integration. Yep. Right. Except instead of talking about code, lines of code, modules of code, making sure yep. that they built together and they work right. I'm talking about humans, people on a team integrating together. Mm. This is like continuous integration for teams or continuous team building or continuous teaming. It's something we do all the time. And, and like this, this thing with my wife earlier today, it's kind of like the red light went on and the, the integration failed. And the most important thing to do next before anything else was to reintegrate. The, uh, it makes me smile and laugh a little bit because <laughs> if, you, if you do have a background in software, you know that integration is the most dangerous point of any software development cycle when you, you start to put two systems together and like, well, things aren't working. And that can take you months to, to resolve that if, if, you, yeah. if they're Which being built like, in completely different ways. But that's why they say, and, and the saying is integrate early, right? Yeah. Because it's only then you catch the errors in a, when they're small and you Got fix it. them and you build in a, in a, in a aligned method. You got it. Small integration is easier than big integration. Yeah. yeah fixing yeah. a small mistake is easier than fixing three months worth of mistakes. Correct. Same thing in interpersonal relationships, right? Fixing it's a just little really powerful, I think. Yeah. Is way easier than fixing three three months, three years, thirty years worth yeah, of three, relationship mistakes. Three days of misalignment is easier to fix <laughs> than three years of misalignment. Exactly. Yeah. You got it. Um,
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it ends up being like the most important thing to do. Oh, and of course, you know, the opposite of integration is disintegration. You, you certainly don't want your product or your team to disintegrate. Yeah. That obviously won't get you the best results. Uh, so this idea of investigate is, is really about being curious, asking open form questions. There's a, there's a body of practice called clean language, maybe using the clean language body of questions and sort of that vocabulary of just learning more, asking questions that, that are totally unbiased and, and, and just genuinely trying to connect and learn more. Turns out that this is like a, a, a superpower skill. Uh, and, and all of the, 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 we've seen four building blocks so far and a handful of these behaviors. I've, I've skipped a couple for brevity. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at a high performing team, you know, like if, uh, if you could imagine a work team or a team of any kind and, and, and you could watch them in a sort of like imagine a lab setting, a laboratory setting, you've got a one way glass wall and it's like a mirror on their side so they can't see you, but you can watch them. If you could watch them, it would look like they were friends. It would look like mm. they cared about each other. You'll see yeah. them, you know, sharing how they're feeling. You'll, you'll see them talking laughing, to each other versus smiling. accusing. You'll see them yeah, laughing exactly. and smiling. Yeah. You'll see them, even if somebody is feeling mad or sad or afraid, you'll see them yeah. like taking care of each other. Yeah. Uh, you'll notice them asking for help and offering help and, and doing all the things that mm -hmm. it, it just looks like they're friends. Right, and, and so these behaviors that, that, I've, that I've shared so far, these were really like concise, fast descriptions. Um, I, I, I was sharing this with somebody once and, and, and she was like, this is really awesome. This is actually a reproducible recipe for love, right? And, and so really, and this is getting woo woo, right? This is like, really, when you watch high performing teams, it's the same thing as team, teams of people who love each other. And I, I don't mean like, I don't yeah. mean sexual and yeah. romantic kind of love. I just mean goodwill. fraternal love. Like yeah. we, goodwill, we, we care about each other. Yep. And, you know, and there's a lot of people who work in uh, I don't know, finance companies and things and, and love isn't a word that they've ever heard uh, mm -hmm. at work. If, if it's not a word that works for, for you, you can try friendship. Right? Yep. It's, it's the same thing. Yep. Uh, it's a longer word. It has more letters. It has two syllables. <laughs> <laughs> same thing. This is, this is what I mean. It's like really intense friendship. Like we care about each other. Yep. Like we care about each other's goals uh, and, and helping each other get what we want together mm -hmm. and, and just, you know, whatever it is. Uh, and, and these behaviors that we've looked at so far, they're like, the, they're the recipe for friendship. Uh, yep. You start, at, at, think of the best relationship you've had in your life, whether it was a, a team or just a friend. You started with positive bias. You, you, you got together because you, you had some positive intention in mind, mm -hmm. not, not to hurt each other, right? Yeah. Not, not to destroy anything. And you had freedom. It was, it was a choice to, to be together. There was no coercion. There was nothing. Nobody was forcing you to do it. Mm -hmm. And there's this emotion check-in. You, you share how you're feeling with each other in the best relationships of your life. And it turns out, according to the science, in the best work teams of your life. Yeah. Oh, and personal alignment. You, you know what's important to you and investigate. You, you share it with each other and you learn as much as you can about each other as fast as you can. This whole thing is a, is a reproducible recipe, not only for friendship, but for high performing teams. It turns out they're the same thing. Yeah. And, and of course, this is, this, is a little, this is a little woo woo for people. So, so I wrote it as code, right? This is the code. This is like a script you could... Uh, you could execute this in your brain and in the brains of all the people on your team. It's, it's really just, this stuff is possible. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's possible to learn these habits and build these skills. There's, there's no magic here. It yep. turns out yep. that it yields, it yields better teams. You can understand how though, this is almost tribal. I mean, all these things that we have today, these structures come from the core idea business, any, any group is, built around the core idea that we come together to prosper. Um, yep. That's what society's built on. That's what government's built on. That's what business is built on. And what we're saying here is in, in exactly in everything that you've said there is that, you know, when to, that's not just a simple thing though, you need to be in, you need to have, you know, an aligned commitment together. You need to have intentions which match in order to prosper because to prosper means we all, you know, have outcomes. Yeah. Um, so I see this as almost being very, how could I put it, primordial 
in, in yeah. just the way that we relate to each other in and that's and the point that you made about it working in all these different spheres just speaks to that that it's just a part of being human i everything you said is spot on <laughs> <laughs> Wrote it down for myself. I haven't heard it <laughs> quite like that. We come together to prosper, whatever that means for us, for yep. whatever group of people it is, for whatever the goal of that group is, it's we come together to prosper, to maximize mm -hmm. that most important thing for us individually or together. Yeah. But that's just a part of being a, a, a I don't know, human, homo sapien, you know, mammal, yeah. whatever it is, that it's, it's, it's a common behavior. So, yeah. 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 A, a human in a world where there are other humans. <laughs> exactly. Funny, it, 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 it tends to show up a lot in you know, I walk around town, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and, and then this is about high performing teams, right? So all, all of those behaviors, they, they build up psych psychological safety, they build up group emotional intelligence, and it's measurable. And then the, the fifth of the six building blocks is pr productivity. So we're actually gonna do some awesome work together. Uh, yep. You mentioned these, this, this one earlier, decider and resolution. Is, is, there's actually two different protocols. Mm. Uh, they're, they're a scripted way, a really effective way to make decisions and to resolve conflict. Right? Yeah, no, because you know, I, I say this is really important because, because you could feel easily just looking. I mean, there's a lot of things out there which would say, just do this, do this, and everything will be okay. That's the silver yeah. bullet syndrome, but that's not reality of humans. So that's why I really that's love nice. this part. Definitely not. In fact, I I, um, I I just wrote a wrote a short I just wrote a short piece about this. Uh, Decide and resolution are awesome tools. It turns out that conflict happens on the best teams. Yeah, and conflict avoidance is a way to not have a best team. If we avoid conflict, well, conflict is the the, the creative is is creative fuel. Yeah, we have different ideas. It's, this is where the that five dysfunctions of a team book ideas. goes into it hugely yeah. is that you need conflict and they call it even even in um i think it's even in amy edmondson's book they call it productive conflict yeah um, productive conflict. you need conflict in order to get high performance and outcomes yeah uh we even saw it you know the what was, what was the name of that movie about that that, that biopic about queen the band <laughs> uh don't stop me now i think it was or yeah yeah whatever it was but, yeah, but yeah. we see this in the band you know it's it's a dramatic depiction but it, yes. it's their conflict their creative conflict that that sort of like creates the genius and yes. the, the way that that story is told right and, and this is another example of voice equal yep. talk time mm -hmm. uh, feeling safe with each other safe enough to be able to say that i have a different idea and, and, and so to, to kind of build that safety, here's a script that we could learn and follow. Here's a habit we could build, decider and resolution. Uh, there's also perfection game. It's a great way to give and receive feedback. And, and sort of like if you don't have a good way to do that, here's a script for doing that, that, that you can do as a habit. I visualize all these meetings happening in my head with a bunch of, <laughs> you know, actor people as we've gone along. And, and the one I see here is when I come into the room, I think this is a great idea. It's the best idea. We should be doing this. Yeah. And we do our are you in kind of thing? Like, and, and someone yeah. says, no, no, I'm out. And, and yeah. you go, oh, wait, wait, what's, 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 what's going on here? It's a great idea. And then they say to me, wait a minute, it's not good enough. We can do better. It's not good enough. Yeah. So that's where it's yeah. like, wait a minute. And, and it's not that they're, I don't they're, like your idea, but I think we can jack it up a notch. And that's where exactly. this is yeah. where the, what will get me in is a fantastic tool to say, okay, so it invites the improvement conversation. You got it. And it's all done in a positive way. It's, it's, yeah. it's like, and, and here's how we could make the idea better. Mm. Right. Yes, it's, it's, never like, it's never no, like you have a bad no. idea. It's that's a good idea. And yes, yeah. and here's how we can make it better. So this, this decision technique, this is a way to, to, to make decisions together as a team. So somebody has an idea. They say, I propose blank. One, two, three. I propose we record a podcast, you know, one, two, yeah. three. Uh, and it's like, yes, thumbs up. I, I'm in. Let's do it. Or it's like flat hand. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have a strong opinion either way. Whatever the rest of the team decides, I totally support the team. Or thumb down is like, um, no, and I have an easy way to improve the idea. Right? Mm -hmm. And then it's what would it take to, to get you in? Is What would it take to turn that thumb down to a thumb up? And I'll tell you something really specific and concise. You know, it's not just, yeah. it's, it's here's, here's how to make the idea better. Yeah. So, I love this idea, especially around the protocols, because it, it actually bolsters the idea of you being a sovereign of your energy. 
um, we're all a finite, uh, we all have finite willpower, we all have finite energy, and it's got to be used in the most powerful way. And it gives people that those tools to be able to say, well, I need to use my energy in the best way. And either A, this isn't a good use of my energy, and I wish you well. And I'm, yeah. my energy is maybe best used somewhere else for, the, um, for what I'm interested in. Um, but also it gives the opportunity to say, this isn't a good enough opportunity use of my energy, but I still, I'm still in, but we need to make it better for me to be, you know, all in to, to give my energy because my energy is really, really important. You got it. You got it. And, and each one of us is responsible for ourselves and our own outcome. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's <laughs> that buy-in that goes, well, once I'm in, no holding back. Like let's, oh, yeah. this is like, let's go. I'm up. I am so in on this. I'm, I'm, <laughs> You know, like <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get a new microphone for the podcast. I did, I'll get a new microphone. Yeah. I'll make sure I rehearse. I'll, yeah. uh, I'll have, I'll have water with me. I'll be well rested. It's going to be the best podcast recording ever. I'm totally yes. in. Even flat hand would be if you decided if the, as a team, we decided to do the podcast. I am totally in. Yeah. All right. The, the, the thumb down would be, well, I can't do a podcast on this date, but to get, to get me in, we could do it on that date instead. Yeah. You know, or instead of podcast, it could be we shoot video. That that would get me in. Thumbs yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Whatever it is, it's it's going to be an additive thing, and my voice is going to get out there in a safe way. Correct. And and so this is a, 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 a this is another one of these superpowers, I guess, for, for mm -hmm. having a having a team where you feel safer, where there's high emotional intelligence, where you get better performance. And the thing I think really we haven't really underscored is that when you practice these things and they talk about this in high performance medic military teams and stuff, sometimes it comes to a point where there's just the communication happens at a subconscious level. Um, oh, yeah. It's not, it's not even a, sometimes it becomes nonverbal even, but, but at the very point, what we're trying to say here is that once the protocols are established, things happen faster. Decisions get made, energy gets distributed, outcomes happen, and you, you get this flywheel effect of, of, of positivity, of, of, of productivity, and all these mm -hmm. ensuing factors that we talked about before. Yeah, and, and like in that example, it, it, it just might take a little bit of training and practice, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to get into that state, and that is the state of a high-performing team. This is sort of the, the, the qualitative state, and, and a lot of the, um, a lot of the empirical things that we could observe, right? Like people are, people are aligned without even using words. Mm -hmm. People are making that's decisions. Trust. That's, that's trust. trust that people that's, are talking about. That is awesome alignment when, when you can decide what to do without even saying it out loud, right? <laughs> I did have someone say to me once, trust is the lubricant of an, any, any organization. If you don't have trust, it's grinding every yeah. day. But if you have trust, it's the thing that just gets the engine going. Got it. There's there's this friction holding things back. Yeah. 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 What one last behavior, one last building block? I call it error handling. Uh, protocol check by the book is like if somebody violates a protocol, you say protocol check and you, you try to fix it. Uh, it doesn't matter doing it exactly that way. What does matter is that on high performing teams, they have a way to hold each other accountable to the team agreements that they have voluntarily made together. Mm -hmm. And when somebody deviates from one of those agreements, there's a safe way to say so and to get back mm -hmm. on track. Yeah. Right. So here's an example. If you don't have a way to do that already, here's, a, here's an easy script to, to, to learn and follow together. Uh, mm -hmm. If you do have a way to do that already, awesome. Keep doing it. Yep. Yeah. I think, uh, I think that's very powerful. As I said, it's one of those things where it, things could go off the rails, but making sure that they come back on is, is always very important. Yeah. In a safe way, where you're not like, accusing or blaming. So. Safe way, no, no accusation or blame. Nobody gets, uh, you know, nobody gets fired or threatened for breaking a team agreement. Because you know? cause the thing is, it is going to happen. So just prepare yeah. for it. I, I can't possibly remember all of the agreements of all of the teams that I'm a member of. And yeah. I'm so grateful that my teammates take care of me and remind me what our agreements mm -hmm. are. Yep. Yeah. It's really like that. And, and, and that's, that's, that's honesty coming from me right there. I'm, I'm a member of different teams and we have different agreements and I really, I love it when people remind me what our agreements were. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. different, different takeaways that people get from this. Uh, there is science and research in high performance teams. You can, you can, you can look back at the literature, you can learn this stuff. Uh, team emotional intelligence is a way to raise psychological safety. Uh, core protocols, this behavior set we just looked at, they're a way to raise team emotional intelligence and psych safety. 
Mm -hmm. uh, turns out friendship is congruent with high performance, you know, sort of <laughs> congruent. Uh, but it's, it's the truth, right? And, and there yeah. are other things people take away from this. Um, and, you know, lo lots of takeaways. Uh, but, but really, it's, it's, it's back to this one. If you want a high performing team, then you definitely want psych safety and you definitely want high team EI. The science and research on teams and team performance bears this out. It's been replicated in many different industries, in many different parts of the world. People have replicated the research. Mm -hmm. If you want to know how to raise the measurements on team emotional intelligence and, and psych safety, you need some behaviors to engage in together and, and core protocols are a set of behaviors that you can do together. Yes. Uh, this idea of continuous teaming or continuous integration together. Uh, this is, this is the thing to do. If you notice the team disintegrating, reintegrate that that's the most important thing to do. Not, not ignore it, not make believe it's not happening, not hope that it will resolve itself, not just bury yourself in the work. Yeah. But work on the team. The work on the team is the work of the team. No, no, we can, we can, <laughs> we can invent aphorisms. The, the working on the team is the work of the team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, I'm starting to see situations where this is a case where you can have two, two groups in the same organization operating completely different ways. And the longer that goes on, you're essentially getting two different versions which you have to 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 yeah. to integrate once again is just going to be uh, it's going to be a big job. So this this idea is really hitting home, especially if you come from that background to say that uh, high performance to remove that that people or tech debt. You know, you got this people debt. Is is that uh, integrate early? It's 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 really important. All these geeky analogies that I know we're, we're butchering them, aren't we? But we're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it totally makes sense. It totally yeah, makes it sense. does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how, how, so, okay, so how to do this for your teams? Uh, you can have high performance teams. Uh, um, you know, so, so to learn more, I've got a couple of books about this. Um, my book, The Core Protocols. I share the work of Jim McCarthy, Michelle McCarthy. Yeah. Uh, my book called High Performance Teams and Foundations. I've got a lot more prose describing uh, these behaviors and why they work. Uh, you can visit my website, kasparowski.com. Subscribe to my news newsletter. There's a contact me menu item on the website you can ask me for help anytime you want and you do uh, workshops as well right uh, and, and workshops and training yeah and coaching for people who want to build these skills Great. Uh, all of this stuff is available for free it's totally open source you can find it at thecoreprotocols.org got it and um and, and uh we have a diagnostic for yep. Yep. for this uh, at comparative agility um, is your team exhibiting behaviors like these we've actually generalized that it's not it's not are you doing the core protocols it's yep. on my team we have a way that we share our emotional state with each other right and, yep. and it doesn't matter exactly what that way is but it actually does matter that you have a way yeah right? so these are kind of the, the kinds of things the diagnostic measures so do you engage in this behavior do you engage in this behavior etc yeah. etc and to so, what degree and it's really observational on my team i observe that yep. this kind of behavior is happening Got it. Cool. And so you can sign up for a free account at comparativeagility.com um, where you can see this uh, as well as other capabilities, just like the ones we mentioned about uh, psychological safety, um, team emotional intelligence, amongst the others around you know, agility and, and, and all these kinds of things. But uh, first and foremost, sign up for the uh, uh, high, high performance teams uh, capability but also highly recommend the core, core protocols book i read it myself last week and it's starting to uh already help me engage in a number of problems i'm having so really thank you for your time richard um Pleasure. it's been really really great having you here and uh, i think i've learned a lot and uh, uh we'll see you. we'll see you again soon all right simon thanks a lot thank you bye